What's going on my fellow duelists, Veteran X here, and today we're going to go over Drytrons, baby, and I'm not going to waste any more time. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over the quick deck list right here, and after I go over the deck list and the cards within it, I will then go into a replay that shows how to drive through the deck, and it's a really fun replay. I'm going to be commentating throughout it, I'm going to show you misplays, I'm going to show you some good combo pieces, and we're going to have a good time, so I am hope you're excited too. Let's get pumped, and let's get right into the deck list profile, baby. So with Drytrons, I have two win well not two win conditions but two big boss monsters i want to get into herald of ultimateness and drytron matheonis draconids so and i both have one of because they're the big boss monsters so with herald of ultimateness when this monster is ritual summoned i can basically omni negate anything as long as i have a fairy monster in my hand i can negate a special summon i can negate monster effects spell effects and trap effects as well negate omni negate everything and it doesn't matter and he's so freaking easy to bring out with drytrons like it's ridiculous how easy it is to bring out herald of ultimateness and i love it and the other boss monster i have here is drytron Metionis draconids so what he does on my opponent's turn this is a quick effect. I can banish monsters with 2,000, exactly 2,000 attack, and how, however many I banish, that's how many monsters I can send to the graveyard on my opponent's field. Yeah. Oh, it's actually 2,000 or 4,000. And what's beautiful about this is that I can send any card on my opponent's field to the graveyard, and it doesn't destroy them. See, it's important to read cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. I send those cards to the graveyard, so monster and card effects that love being destroyed and get destruction effects, they don't happen. They just get sent to the graveyard, and boom, that's it. It's freaking beautiful. I love it, baby. All right, so now that I've gone over the two boss monsters, let's talk about the card of the deck, shall we? I run three Drytron Alpha Thubans. This guy grabs ritual monsters from the deck. Run three of. If you're running any less than three of this guy, you should not be playing Drytrons, ladies and gentlemen. Run three of of this guy at all times. Yes, sir. Next, we're going to go over Drytron Gamma um, Eltanen? Eltanen? I don't know how to say that guy's name. But basically what he does is when he's special summoned, he can special summon another Drytron from the graveyard. and But their, their effects don't activate. So... El Tannen, he's more like a combo extender. Um, you can run one or two copies of him. Do not run three of this guy in your deck. You're going to start seeing that he's going to be kind of bricky sometimes. But he's more of a combo extender. So if you're able to pitch him to the grave somehow, go through some combos, and you want to keep going, then activate his graveyard effect, the tribute, um, either a ritual monster or another Drytron. Pick, bring himself back, and then you get the special summon another Drytron from your graveyard. He, he's really good at maintaining card advantage. The next Drytron we'll go over is Zeta uh, Aldheba. Aldheba. Dude, I hope I said that correctly. Aldheba. You want to run three of this guy too because when he's special summon, he can get a ritual spell from your deck. And that's any ritual spell in the entire game, ladies and gentlemen. So he's really freaking good. Basically, in my opening hand, I want to see Thuban and Ald Aldheba. Aldheba. There we go. Every single time. The next Drytron we'll go over is Delta Altaeus. So when he special summon, you reveal either one ritual monster or one ritual spell in your hand, and you get to draw one card. Simple as that. He's also another combo extender. You don't want to run more than two, one or two copies of him. Uh, I'm running two because more Drytrons, the better, but three copies is way too many. Do not run three copies of him. Also, another big thing with Drytrons is that I'm running fairies with them as well. So Eva is one of the best fairy cards in the game. So let's go over what it does, shall we? If this card is Sent to the graveyard no matter how it goes to the graveyard whether it's from an xc summoning link summoning uh it's pitched to the grave from your hand you pitch it to the graveyard from your deck doesn't matter you can banish up to two other light fairy monsters and then you get to add level two or lower light fairy monsters based on how many monsters you just banished so if you banish two uh light fairy monsters you get to add two level two or lower light fairy monsters from your deck to your hand and it's freaking beautiful it maintains advantage and it's perfect for herald of ultimateness remember when i said ultimateness can negate literally anything all you have to do is just pitch a freaking fairy to the grave so let's say you have ultimateness on the board and you negate one of your opponents um anything whatever they try to do it doesn't matter only thing ultimateness can't negate is a normal summon that's the only thing you can't negate but special summons spell traps monster effects bam get them out of here coach get them out the game coach so yeah, so you activate Ultimate's effect, you pitch Eva to the grave, you activate its effect, and then you get two more fairies. You get to put two more fairies in your hand. Oh yeah, and Herald of Ultimateness's effect is not once per turn. You can keep 
you, you can stop your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! It's freaking beautiful, and I love it. I freaking love it, baby. And there are also other ways to use Ava outside of Herald of Ultimateness. So, as I mentioned, you could link it away. You could discard it from your hand. You could discard it from your deck. Well, not discard from your deck, but pitch it from your deck, and this effect activates. And a monster that can help send it from the deck to the grave is this one, Diviner of the Herald. I would run more copies of it if I had, like, another one but this is my only one so i may craft one i have 37 cp up here but for right now the vinyl of the herald does this if it's normal special summon you can send one fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard yes from your deck or your extra deck to the graveyard it's a freaking fairy type foolish burial like come on man so mainly when i normal summon divino the hero i'm pitching uh evil to the grave like every single time and also if this card is tributed you can special summon one level two or lower fairy monster from your hand or deck. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if this card is used in a ritual, that's normally I use it in a ritual summon that, that pop off this effect, and it's beautiful. It catches my opponents off guard all the time. It just maintains so much advantage on the board. It's beautiful. If you can run two or three copies of Diviner Herald, then do it. Absolutely do it. I only have one right now because I only have one copy, but two or three, definitely do it for this ritual for this deck. Cyber Petite Angel. <laughs> I'm running three of this because it's my main normal summon. If I'm not normal summon Divine or the Herald, then I'm always normal summon Cyber Petite Angel. And what Cyber Petite Angel, well, you know what this card does. You can add one Cyber Angel Monster or Machine Angel Ritual from your deck to your hand. And it's a, it doesn't get any more simple than that, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm running three copies of Herald of Orange Light. So when your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can send this card and one other fairy monster from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation. And if you do, destroy that card. Yeah, three of. If you're not running three Herald of the Orange Light, you're not doing this right. You need three of this guy. And that's what I'm saying. All the negates just start to add up. You got Herald of the Orange Light. You have Herald of Ultimateness. You have so many options to go into, and it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. Max C, baby. I would run three copies of it if I had it, but I don't. One of the best hand traps in the game. One of the best cards all of Yu-Gi-Oh, if I want to be honest. Basically, you pitch this card to the grave, and if your opponent doesn't beat you from all the special summons they do, you better win on next turn because you draw every time they do a special summon. It's that simple. So they have to take the Max C challenge. If your opponent cannot beat you after you use Max C, your hand should be freaking full of cards and you should basically win on the next turn. So it's just so freaking good. Now, Max C does not stop your opponent from doing their plays unless they choose to do so. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind. It only it encourages them to stop doing their plays. It doesn't stop them like a negate or something like that. And you know, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. But Max C is so freaking good. I would run three copies of it if I had it, but clearly I only have one copy. Max C, Max C, Max C. Run it at three. If you don't have three, then at least one run. Run one of them. And then, of course, I have, you know, good old Ash Blossom. I only have two copies. I'm running two copies in my deck. Too easy, baby. Too freaking easy. All right, let's go to the Ritual Monsters. So I have one Cyber Angel, Natasha. And this card is so stupid. Oh, my God. God, this card is so good. So basically, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one other Cyber Angel monster, then target one monster your opponent controls. Special summon Natasha, and if you do, take control of your opponent's monster. That's it. That's all you have to do. And guess what? You're going to pitch Cyber Angel Natasha to the grave by just normally going through your combos. Just... It just brings so much advantage here. It's beautiful. I can't tell you how many opponents I've caught off guard with Natasha's ability. It's busted. It's disgusting. It's mwah, dre magnifique, and I love it. Oh, my goodness. How can we forget about Cyber Angel Ben 10, ladies and gentlemen? If you're not running three copies of Ben 10, do not play this deck. You need three copies. Well, you can still play Drytrons, but the version I'm playing, you need three copies of this bad boy, or bad gal, I should say. <laughs> so basically, if this card is tributed, you can add one light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. This amazing effect is not once per turn. It's elemental straddles for fairy type monsters, and I love it. Ooh, it's so freaking spicy. And the thing is, Benten can search for itself. So when you're going through your combos with Drytron, remember, Drytron either needs Another dry trying to special summon itself or a ritual monster. So you want to flood your hand with Ben 10s and then you pop off with your uh, dry trying effects. 
you, you send the Cyber Angel Bit 10 to the graveyard, you get the bonus effect from your Drytron, and then you get to refill your hand with another Fairy Monster. And also, that's more ammo for Herald of Ultimateness. And this just keeps adding on and adding on and adding on. You maintain tempo and card advantage when you combine Drytrons with Cyber Angel Bit 10. And Bin 10 targets are just like infinite. Come on, you got Cyber PT Angel. You got Herald of Orange Light. You could even bring out Herald of Ultimateness if you want. Oh my goodness, Divine of the Herald, Eva. You basically get to search about 40% of your deck whenever you go through your combos and you use Cyber Angel Bin 10. It's beautiful. Oh, you can hear the excitement in my voice. That's how excited I am about this deck. I love Drytron so much. I'm having a good time with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm about to say, if you're enjoying yourself and enjoying the hype, consider subscribing, baby. Come on, let's keep up the good vibes. The next card we got is Cyber Angel Dakini. Run one copy of this. So when she special summon, your opponent has to choose one monster to send to the graveyard. And this thing doesn't target. There's, They can't do anything except negate it. But... If they don't, then you have to send one of their monsters to the graveyard. I love it. And also, it has a neat end phase effect. You get to add a ritual monster or one machine angel ritual in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Nice. So basically, if I have been 10 in the graveyard, I'm bringing it back. And that's more ammo for, of course, Herald of Ultimateness. And you just start off with more combos. Beautiful. I already went over Herald of Ultimateness. That's my Omni Negate. You want to play Yu-Gi-Oh? No. I'm not going to let you play Yu-Gi-Oh when I play this card, baby. It's not going to happen. You're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! when I play Herald of Ultimateness, okay? And then, of course, I went over Draconids already. Next card we're going to talk about is Cyber Emergency. You can run three copies of this if you want. Basically, it can search any one light machine monster that cannot be normal summoned to set or one Cyber Dragon monster from your deck to your hand. And the thing is, this searches any of the Drytrons. It's a searcher for Drytrons. It's beautiful. The, I mean, there's no other words here. If you have more copies of it, it literally searches any Drytron in your deck. Actually, I might run this at three. I might create some. I have 311 crafting materials, so I'm, I might craft three copies of this. And I might nick some of the cards here. And the beautiful thing about Drytron is you can run more than 40 cards in this deck. Because the synergy that's here, it allows you to access so many cards which are in your deck. And you don't have to worry about having over 40 cards, if you know what I mean. Like, your deck is pretty much your second hand, almost. So you can run more than 40 cards. Now, if you run, like, 50 cards in Drytron, that might be pushing it. But anything between 49 and 40, you'll be golden, I promise you. Preparation of rights. Add one level 7 lower or ritual monster from your deck to your hand. And you can add one ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand if you so desire. This card is really good. Run two of. You can run three if you want, but I run two. My first target is always Cyber Angel for 10. I can keep doing combos. It's, it's wonderful. Dark Ruler no more. So this spell card, you know, it negates all the monster effects on your opponent's field. But they take no battle damage uh, for the rest of the turn. So basically, if your opponent has like a bunch of negates on the board and monsters that you can't get through you play this card and you go through your combos and you set up your board and hopefully you can stop them on their next turn when they go through their combos again hopefully when it comes back to your turn again you can have enough uh tempo and weapons to use to win for games so yeah one of the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Ruler No More is really good Drytron Nova run three of this three piece three piece from KFC baby oh my goodness special summon one Drytron monster from your deck do I need to read the rest of this card? Special summon one Drytron monster from your deck. That's it. You're going to add it this once per turn, of course. And also, you destroy it during the end phase. But the thing is, you're going to use that Drytron on your turn. You're going to use them regardless. It doesn't matter. This destroy it during the end phase effect doesn't matter. Either you use them in a combo or you win the game. So this downside, it doesn't matter. And also... You can't forget, it says, you cannot search for some of monsters except monsters that cannot be normal summon set during the turn you activate this card. So basically what that means, you can only summon monsters from the extra deck, and you can also summon your ritual monsters. But anything outside of that, you cannot special summon them. But guess what? I'm not trying to special summon nothing else. I'm only using extra deck monsters and Drytron monsters and ritual monsters, so they don't get affected by this, by this line of text here. This line of text... It doesn't affect my playstyle at all. You can still go through your combos. You just can't special summon like Cyber Petite Angel or Herald of Orange Light, but you're not going to be special summoning those guys anyway. Cyber Petite Angel is your normal summon. And 
Herald of Orange Light should basically never see the field, even though it's a tuner. It should never see the field. It should always be in your hand as a way to negate and ammo for Herald of Ultimateness. But, you know, if you see a position that you can normal summon him and you can go to like a synchro play, then sure, go right ahead. All right, we got the field spell, Drytron Fafnir. And this thing searches any Drytron spell or trap from your deck, except itself, of course. So you're going to be searching for a Drytron Nova. And the other target is Mathionis Drytron, which is the ritual spell. And this card is so damn good. We'll go over it shortly, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah. And also, it has some bonus effects. Uh, if a monster is special summoned, as long as you control a Drytron monster, you can reduce that monster level by 1 per 1,000 of, of his current attack. And, you know, that's something that can catch your opponents off guard. If they want to do, like, some synchro summons or anything, and they summon, like, a level 2 tuner, and they need a level 3 monster, but... If you activate that field spell, that means the tuner becomes level 1, and now they can't go into that uh, level 5 synchro that they wanted. So you just mess them up. It's pretty good. I, it catches a lot of people off guard. I like that a lot. All right, so I'm running one copy of Machine Angel Ritual and one copy of Machine Angel Absolute Ritual. So they both have their different things that they can help you out with. So I'm running Machine Angel Ritual because it can be searched by Cyber Petite Angel. That's the only reason why I'm running it, in one copy of it. And also, if a light monster you control would be destroyed by Battle Card Effect, Watch the card your graveyard, you can banish this card instead. And it's not once per turn, too. So if you find a way to recycle it back to your graveyard, then if you're one of your light monsters is in danger, then you can just banish that card again, they'll be safe. So yeah, it offers protection. It's a really good uh, graveyard effect. And Machine Angel Ritual is, like, if I'm trying to extend a combo to the extreme and I want to summon, like, Cyber Angel Dakini, I'm normally using Machine Angel Ritual to do that. And basically, it allows me to use my graveyard as my second hand. I can shuffle... Uh, Cyber Petite Angel and Cyber Angel Petit back into my deck, even though they're in my graveyard, and I can uh, Ritual Summon Dakini. It's really nice. And let's talk about the one of the best cards in the deck, Mateonis Drytron. Yes, this is the best card in the deck, and you do not want to win three copies of it. Why? Because it may start getting bricky. Now, you may be asking, well, Vet X, if this is the best card in this deck, why not run three copies of it? Because it has such a great recursion effect from the graveyard that you literally don't need to run three copies of it if you want to by all means do it but i get the most mileage out of just having two copies and i go through all of my combos smoothly so basically this can ritual summon any ritual monster from your hand or gra or graveyard that's right you can ritual summon monsters from the graveyard too with this card it is bonkers how good this card is you could and the way it works is that you tribute machine monsters from your hand or field whose total attack is equal to or exceed the attack of the ritual monster so the thing is your most of your targets will be drytrons here and since it has 2000 attack you could just tribute one drytron and you can ritual summon herald of ultimateness a 12 star monster with just one monster one monster can special summon herald of ultimateness ladies and gentlemen and that's why this ritual spell is so freaking good. And let's go over his graveyard recursion effect. So if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one dry trying monster you control. It loses exactly 1,000 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. And if it does, add this card to your hand. You can only use the graveyard recursion effect once per turn. So you can activate the ritual summoning effects of dry, Metalonis dry trying as much as you want. But the graveyard recursion is only once per turn. So yeah, that's like... If you have two copies in your hand, boom, boom, use both of them. You do graveyard recursion to get the, the one of them back. There's your third copy right there. And the thing is, if you at your third use of Metonia's dry turn in one turn, you're probably already in a winning condition, to be quite honest. You're probably in a good position. So that's what I'm saying. You don't need to run more than three. If you want to run three, let me know how your mileage is on it. I'm curious. But two is perfect for me, ladies and gentlemen. It's perfect. All right, now let's take a dive into the extra deck, shall we? So I'm Herald of Art Light is the only Secro monster I'm running. You can run two copies of this if you want. So basically, any monster sit from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. So it's a floodgate for your graveyard. So basically, what you want to do, you want to go through. Your, if you're going on turn one, you want to go through your combos, and if you can squeeze in Herald of the Arc Light before you end your turn, that will be perfect because that's going to mess up so much of your opponent's uh, combos and turns that they want to do. Oh man, it's going to mess up so many of their graveyard effects. It's going to be so good. And also, when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, quick effect, just tribute this card and negate the activation if you do destroy that card. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get one ritual monster or one ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So yeah, Herald of Art Light does everything that you would want it to do within this deck. It's freaking great. 
Oh my goodness, this card gives you so much advantage. And it's the ultimate turn one card. If you can find some way to squeeze it in with, you know, either using Tuner from Herald of Orange Light, or I think there's another Tuner here, Diviner of the Herald. So if you get them on the field with Cyber Petite Angel, bam, Synchro Summon, you're going to be in a good shape. Uh, number 54, Lionheart. He's optional. He's just a good XCs monster that I, I like to run. He uses three level one monsters. And he can inflict battle damage to your opponent instead of you taking it. So, yeah, he can, if you're trying to swing for game and whatnot, he can help out with that. Lyra Lust, Assemble Nightingale. This card can attack your opponent's life points directly, and it can attack as many times each battle phase by the number of materials attached to it. Drytron Move Beta Fafnir. This card is ridiculous. It's so freaking good within the Drytron strategy. So, when he exceeds someone, you get to pitch one Drytron from your deck to the grave. Bam. All right, that's already advantage right there. Your graveyard is your second hand. You can use that Drytron that's in the grave to go into other combos. And if you want to ritual summon a monster, you can use the materials that's attached to it as the materials for the ritual summon. And basically, you're summoning this guy by using two, two or more Drytrons. So if you have two Drytrons with him as materials, you pop off with... Meteon is Drytron, you can just send those two materials off and bam, you can ritual summon Draconids. Or you can send one material to the graveyard, Herald of Ultimateness. That easy. And you still have a big body on board with this guy. And he's a Drytron, so he can activate the other uh, Drytron's effects from the grave too. Pure advantage. Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder. Oh, we got the big thick boy out here. Yeah, this guy is a board wipe. So if you're not able to finish your opponent on the turn that you swing, let's say turn two, and you attack normally with uh, Mu Beta, just go into this guy and hopefully you can just get off his effect. Detach two materials from this card, send all the cards from the field to the graveyard. He's a field noob. Link Karibo. One of the best Link 1 monsters in the game. You need to have one in your deck at all times. Say I have a Drytron on board. I'm trying to get into the grave. All I do is go Link into Link Karibo. Bam. He's in the graveyard. I can pop off a fence. Keep on going. He's a combo extender. This guy's just a placeholder right now until I can find another Link 2 monster. You know, like I said, I just started back with Master Duel and getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm going to switch him out for a different card. Nightmare Severus. He can... Uh, destroy one special summon monster on your opponent's side of the field by discarding one card from your hand. Really good card. We have Nightmare Phoenix here. It destroys a spell card, of course. Herald of the Mirage <laughs> Lights. So this bad boy, uh, two monsters with the same type of attribute, and also when a spell or trap card is activated, send one other fairy monster from your hand of graveyard, negate the activation, and destroy that card. And this is a quick effect. Really, really good. And this card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card. Add up the two ritual monsters and or spells with different names from your graveyard to your hand. Graveyard recursion. Beautiful. Decode Talker. You know, just a generic Link 3 monster. Fire All Dragon. Generic Link 4 monster. And we have Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. A generic Link 5 monster. And I'm only running this because I don't have Appaloosa yet. So once I get Appaloosa, add him to the deck, I'll get Boar's Low Dragon, add him as well. All of those, you know, the, the staples that you see in Extra Deck Monsters, they'll be in here as well. So this is just a sample deck, and now let's get right into the replay, baby. I hope you're enjoying this so far, and I hope that you're enjoying, like, my breakdown of the cards and how they work. And when I go through this replay, hopefully it can see, you'll see these things in motion. So let's get right into it. All right, so first things first here. I am playing against a Marine Cess player here. And as they go through their combos, I'm just going to uh, navigate here. So I have no idea how to play against Marine Cess at all. So when I see that they're trying to search from the deck, I just go ahead and use uh, Ash Blossom to get rid of it. And my starting hand, so I had Ash Blossom, of course. I got Divine of the Herald in hand, Natasha, Raigeki, and Machine Angel, Absolute Ritual. This opening hand is not the best. I'm not going to lie. Basically, my best card in my hand is Raigeki. That's pretty much the only play I got right now unless I can draw a Drytron. Something to help me search my deck and get out more combo pieces. Basically, what the Marine's Princess does, it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to just go ahead and pause it and we're going to go to our turn here. And this is the beauty of editing. Three, two, one. Hey, and now it's my turn. So, I want to say why my opening hand wasn't the best is because basically all of these cards right here, these four, they're like combo extenders. And, I mean, well... These three are combo extenders. Raigeki is, of course, Raigeki. You know, that's just whatever it does. But Diviner the Herald, I want to use that as a combo piece for 
a herald of ultimateness or i want to find some way to extend my combos natasha i can't open up with natasha natasha does nothing for me on turn one so that's why these cards aren't necessarily good on turn one but i did get a dry trunk alpha thuban on my top deck so that was beautiful i used raigeki to get rid of uh everything on her field nice and then i pitch natasha to the grave so i can Special Summon Drytron Thuban, and I can search one ritual monster from my deck. But, unfortunately, they Ash Blossomed it, so I don't get to the search off. But, I do get to, uh, to summon them. Wait, excuse me, not summon them, but, you know, just get rid of it. Alright, and to keep things going here, I set Machine Angel Absolute Ritual because I can't use it. I'm setting that just to draw out any kind of, like, disruption from my opponent. Just, just to bait them to use one of their cards, honestly. All right. And also, I did something really nice here. So what I did here, I normal summoned Diviner of the Herald. And when I did, I, I activate her effect to send one monster from the deck to the graveyard. And guess who I sent? Good old Ava, baby. And once I pitched Ava to the graveyard, I then banished Diviner of the Herald and Cyber Angel Natasha. So that way, I can search out two fairy monsters from my deck to my hand. So yeah, let's keep it going, baby. Hit play. All right, and they're going through some stuff, and I negate it with Herald of uh, Orange Light. I don't know what the heck this thing does. Pascalus, like I said, I don't know how to play Marine Sets at all, so I just did that to get rid of it. And here we go. Here's something else that happened. So I top deck Drytron, Metionis, Draconis, and what I did, I special summoned Thuban by pitching him to the grave. And it doesn't matter that I pitch that my big boss monster to the graveyard because the ritual spell can ritual summon him from the graveyard. So that's how good it is. And from there, I was able to add one ritual monster from my deck to my hand. And I added Batan so I can get more advantage as well. Because I know my opponent is going to destroy this Drytron. I know it's going to happen. So I get to use his graveyard fair on the next turn whenever he destroys it. All right. So I go into Link Karibo to go ahead and add uh, Drytron to the grave. But then they activate the trap card to banish my Link Karibo, which is bad. I don't like that at all. And now they're going through more of their marine sets combos. That's not important for us. So we're going to skip ahead when it comes back to my turn. Let's do this, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now we are back. So I had only one card in my hand before I drew. And it was only Cyber Angel Batin. That's the only card I had in my hand. And guess what I topped that? A freaking Max C. So I would have liked to have Max C on my previous turn when my opponent was going through all of their combos. But, hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? So... On this turn, things will look a little grim, right? Well, not so fast, because remember, I have a Drytron in Grave, and I have Cyber Angel Batin ready to sacrifice. So let's play, shall we? So my opponent, they're doing more Marine Princess stuff. I don't know what Marine Princess does, sorry. So now, I activate Drytron Thubin's effect from the Grave, and I pitch Cyber Batin to the Grave. And now I get two searches off. I get... This search, I get that one ritual monster, and then I get that one light fairy from my deck to my hand because of Cyber Angel Pretend. So these are the two cards I add. Herald of Ultimateness, and I add Ava to my hand. Two searches. And remember, before this turn started, I only had one card in my hand, Cyber Angel Pretend. And now, look at this. Alright, so what I did there, so I got my Drytron on board, and I normal summon Ava. And then I went into Mu Beta. Mu Beta sent a card from my deck to the graveyard, and I sent out Heba to the grave so that way I can search out a ritual spell from my deck. And what's so important here is that even though I did that, I'm still going to get more advantage because Ava was also attached to Mu Beta. So now that it got sent to the graveyard, I can activate its effect as well. Banish two fairies from my field or graveyard, and I get to search two more fairies and add them to my hand. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So I add the ritual spell to my hand, and Ava's effect pops off. Yep, I get Herald of Orange Light, and I get Cyber Petite Angel to my hand, baby. Marine Princess does some stuff, but I don't know what it does. I don't care. They start doing other things, and guess what? They activate that effect. I did bait out one of their trap cards, so it's going to destroy Machine Angel Absolute Ritual. But that's okay, because I'm not really worried about using it. So, I want to get Herald of Ultimateness on the field right now, so I can stop my opponent from doing stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is. I put him in defense mode, because I'm scared of, like, high attacks. And my opponent tries to activate Marine Says Wave, but I negate it. I think I negate it here. 
Oh, no, I didn't negate it because I didn't need to. And do I pass? I go right into my opponent's turn. And here, this is very crucial. So, Max C is so freaking good. I'm going to play Max C, and whenever my opponent special summons monsters, I'm going to draw one card from my deck to my hand. And I also have two negates on board, too. I have Herald of Orange Light and Cyber Petite Angel. And remember, with Herald of Ultimate, this, I can negate special summons, spells, traps, and monster effects. So, that's two Omni negates I have. So, I got Max C and two negates. So, let's see how I can power through this. So Marine says activates her effect. I don't know what it does. So I just pitch one to the grave to negate it. And I also chain Max C to it as well. So whenever they want to do some normal, some special summons, go right ahead. Have a blast. Because I'm trying to gain more advantage here. Herald Ultimateness effects resolve. It negates and destroys the Marine says that was in his link zone right here. Sends it to the grave. They draw their super trap card from the deck. She goes back into Marine Sess again because it got sent back to her hand. Uh, that's destroyed again. I don't have any more negates. And now it's my turn again. Oh, excuse me. Max C is popping off. Max C is popping off, ladies and gentlemen. They want to keep they they want to do the Max C challenge, so I'm gonna let them. Every time they special summon a monster, I get to draw from my deck. And guess what? I've already drawn two cards, which is gonna three cards, and I have another negate on board. And they couldn't finish me off. And that's the thing that I noticed about Marine Sess. Since they are locked out of most special summons from the Link, the only thing they can special summon is Cyber's Monsters and Water Monsters. So that limits their damage output. And guess what? 800 life points is too much, baby, because now I'm about to go crazy. So as you saw, I draw from the deck. Let's go back to the dual recap here. We go to switch turns, and I draw Gamma Eltanen. So basically, Eltanen, he can special summon another Dry Charm from the grave. And I activate Thuban's effect, and I pitch one of my dry trunks to the grave so I can search for a ritual monster. All right, let's go. And guess who I searched? Ben 10, baby, because I have another one that I need to use. Ha! Mete on the dry trunk, I get the graveyard effect, and I special some of my other dry trunk, and I pitch my Ben 10 to the grave to activate Alheba's effect. Now, I, I really hope I'm not going too fast here. So basically, I've been activating these effects from the graveyard, and with Alheba, he searches a ritual spell from the deck, and I can add it to my hand. And since I use Ben 10 to get tributed, because these things tribute, they tribute a card. So Ben 10 so effect activates, and I get to search out a light fairy monster. And I do. I bring out Daikini. And then I activate uh, my other Drytron, this guy right here, and I get to special summon one Drytron from the grave. And from here, I exceed into move beta. And he gets to pitch another dry charm from my deck to the graveyard. I activate his effect. And this is the guy that lets me draw one card from the deck by revealing a ritual monster or spell in my hand. From there, I activate... Where's it at? This card right here, Machine Angel Absolute Ritual. And it shuffles the materials from the graveyard back into my deck. And I was able to use that to summon Cyber Angel Daikini. So that's what I mean my graveyard is my second hand. It's freaking awesome. I love it. And Daikini effects activates, which means my opponent has to choose one of his monsters to send to the graveyard, and it does. And I activate Metonius Drychon, and I ritual summon a uh, Herald of Ultimateness from the graveyard. Yes, I just did that, baby. And I use one material from Drychon Move Beta. And remember, all I have to do is match the attack here. And I did, since all Drychons have 2,000 attack, and Herald of Ultimateness just happens to have 2,000 attack too. So I was able to get him back on the board. Beautiful. And then I activate my second copy of Metonia's Drytron, and I special, or well, I ritual summon Draconids from the graveyard. And then I made a misplay here, so I thought that I could get rid of Nightmare, I mean, her Marine Cess monster with 3500 if I use uh, Nightmare Severus, but I think I can't target it or something like that. And so his effect can only get rid of this, this Marine Cess right here. Yeah, feels bad, man. But... We still keep on going. I use Draconis to attack, get rid of a big old beat stick. She activates some kind of effect with Marine Cess. I let it go through. I don't negate it because I need to save this, all my negates for the next turn. And I don't have enough damage on board for lethal, but I do get Daikini's effect to go off. I get to add one ritual monster back to my hand. I get another fairy. That's two points for ultimateness. And bam, my opponent just surrenders because they can't fight through this. They can't fight through this at all. Look, my board had Draconids on it, so all I have to do is banish 
uh, 2,000 or 4,000 attack monsters from my graveyard. I have like six in there, and then I could just send all those monsters to the graveyard. So I could send six, up to like six of my opponent's cards to the graveyard, and it's a quick effect. And I also had two Omni Negates with Herald of Ultimateness. They weren't going to fight through that, and then, you know, uh, Nightmare Cerberus and Dakini as well. So yeah, that was beautiful. You also saw like the combat potential. Like this battle went out the nine turns and I had 800 life points left with one card in my hand and I still was able to make a combat and win. And that's the power of Drytrans, baby. And you can go back at any time during the replay and you can, you know, go back and slow down. I'm sorry if I was speaking a little too fast, but the combos, they were just coming off. That's just how fast the replay is, unfortunately. But when I'm playing it like live and whatnot, it's a much more slower, thought out process. And it's it's so much fun. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, if you want to see more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! content in general, subscribe, baby. And I also live stream on Twitch at Hey Veteranets. I think the banner is like right here. I'm going to throw it on the screen or something or whatever. And yeah, I'll see you on the next episode, guys. Have fun out there. Get out there and let's duel. And now, with all of that out of the way, get out there and let's go play some freaking video games and watch some anime. Oh, and also, I will be having a lot more debt profiles. Probably do a Harpy Ladies profile next. Stay tuned for that one. And I got a whole bunch of other Yu-Gi-Oh! content planned. So I'd love to see you there.